What's going on everyone? Scott Martin here, Bassmaster Pro, and this series is strictly designed to help you catch more bass. How to catch a bass on different lures. We're gonna go through a whole bunch of them. So be sure, do me a favor, be sure to subscribe to our channel, number one. Number two, be sure to share these tips out. We wanna grow the sport of fishing, guys. We want to share this knowledge with everyone. And so we're gonna do this series. We're gonna do lots of different uh, categories, but we're gonna start off in this one, talking about how to catch a bass on a rubber worm. All right, rubber worms, plastic worms, Texas rig little j dudes right here. This is what we're gonna talk about today. I've got several of my favorite kinds, and really, there's three different types of worms here we're gonna talk about. This is a Guggen Baits Slim Shake, which is gonna fall in the finesse category of, of rubber worms. This is uh, one of my favorites down here in South Florida. It's a Zoom Speed Worm. Has a lot of action on the tail. We'll talk about that in a minute. That's a different type of bait, okay? And then last but not least, probably the one that I've caught the biggest fish on is the 10 inch Mondo Worm by Guggen Baits. This is just a standard 10 inch worm and we're gonna talk about that. It's a ribbon tail, right? We're gonna talk about how I like to choose them, what colors I like to pick, what size hook I wanna fish it with, what size weight, and even the line and the rod. These are all important factors on being able to catch fish and we wanna start you guys off right. Let's start off with a little finesse bait right here. This is a Guggen Slim Shake right here and this is a bait that I use a lot when I'm really trying to get those bass to bite and they're a little finicky. Maybe, maybe it's a little cold outside. Maybe it's a little hot outside. You know, it's that kind of that uncomfortable time of the year, right? So when it's cool out, the fish are a little lethargic. When it's real hot, the deep heat of the summer, sometimes those fish only feed for just a little bit throughout the day and the cool parts of the morning or the cooler parts of the evening. So they're a little lethargic throughout the day. And something like this is a standard straight tailed what we used to call like a finesse worm. This is the Guggen Baits Slim Shake, and I'm gonna show you how I like to rig that up. Texas rig for the most part, or on a shaky head or a little jig head. Let me show you my setup that I like to fish with this, hook and weight wise. A couple rules of the road. Don't put a big giant heavy weight on it. I like fishing a smaller weight. This is a little, little eighth ounce, a little eighth ounce tungsten. I like to also peg it. So I'll take a little bobber stop. These are these little black things right here. And I'll show you how I rig a standard Texas rig here at the end of the video on the ribbon tail, which is gonna be the last worm. And then I'm gonna show you how to fish it, hopefully catch a bass. And the last thing is a small hook. This is just a little offset hook, three aught. And that's basic setup right there for my finesse style worm, like this Slim Shake. No, again, nothing too big. You don't want a big giant hook. You don't want a big giant weight. Now, when I'm fishing the finesse worm, I like a little bit lighter line, anywhere from 10 to 15 pound test. I don't fish this finesse worms on real heavy line. You know, like a big 10 inch worm or a big, uh, you know, swimming worm, I can throw heavier line, but with the finesse stuff, you want to downsize your line a little bit. Just don't rig it up on some real heavy stiff stuff. 10 to 15 is kind of your max. Rod wise, you know, I like a seven foot medium heavy is really what I like for those smaller worms. Again, they're lightweight, you, they're, you, they're finessey, right? You just want to downsize everything just a little bit. And that's my basic setup on my finesse now. A swimming worm, one of my favorite baits down here in South Florida. I've caught a lot of fish over the years on this bait right here. Simple setup, get the worm. Again, a bobber stop is gonna be key. I like a little bit heavier weight on these, anywhere from a quarter ounce up to a 5 16 And again, I'm gonna fish this with a straight shank hook a lot of times. Now what I'm gonna do with this worm right here is I'm gonna fish it just like I normally fish any worm on the bottom, we're gonna show you here in just a minute. But I also will swim this worm through the water column, just cast it out and literally reel it either on close to the surface or subsurface and just reel it back through the grass and let it swim through there. Real similar to a spinner bait, just cast it out and reel it in back through the water column and uh, those fish will come up and grab it. But a lot of times I'm just fishing it on the bottom and with this tail, it has a lot of action. So it's completely opposite, right? of the finesse worm. Finesse worm is not gonna have a whole lot of action at all. It's just real subtle. This right here is gonna have a lot of commotion and a lot of vibration, 
Okay, so in muddier water, this can work really well, or in clear water, swim in it. That vibration and that action, those fish see it, and they'll chase it down and hit it. Now, rod and reel and line size on that type of worm, I'm going to go a little bit heavier. Typically, I'm going to start around 15-pound test as my low, up to 20-pound fluorocarbon. I like the P-line fluorocarbon a lot. It's just super sensitive and a super good line. Uh, Rod-wise, I'm going to step it up again there. I'm going to go to a 7.3 heavy to a 7.6 heavy flipping stick. That size worm with that type of stuff warrants a little bit heavier tackle and, uh, and and you'll get it done. You know, I'm telling you, it's a really great way to cover water. It's a really great way to catch a lot of really big fish. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is a big 10 inch worm, one of my favorites. Ah, that is the sound of awesomeness right there. That's right, the Guggen Baits Mondo Worm. I helped design this bait right here, guys. This thing catches them. It just catches them. It's a 10 inch worm. It's 10 inches of just some sweetness right there. Uh, it's got a great action on the tail. And this is what we call a ribbon tail. Ribbon tail because it looks like a ribbon, right? Okay. Now you look at this type of worm, it's a paddle tail, right? Or a swimming tail. And then you look at the, the slim shake, kind of finesse, not a lot going on. This is a ribbon tail. And those are your three baits that I like to fish when I'm fishing a plastic worm. And this bait right here is great for fishing in brush piles. This bait is great for shoreline fishing. If you're just walking the banks and just casting out in the lake, you know, it's great for coming through the grass like we have in this lake that right here, lots of submerged vegetation. This worm right here will go through that grass and slither through it really, really well. Now, how I like to rig this up, really, lots of different ways, right? I mean, I, I'm gonna, it's a wide range of weights. You can fish this thing on a 5 16 you can fish it on a half ounce, you can fish it on a little 1 8 In the super shallow, thick stuff, I'm gonna go lighter, right? Like that 8 ounce, 3 16 that type stuff. Get out in 7, 8, 10, 12 foot of water, I'm gonna fish a, a quarter or a 3 8 or a 5 16 I get out in say 20, 25 foot of water, I might even go up to a half ounce or even heavier. Okay, I'm gonna rig that up again on a Trocar TK-130. That's my favorite little hook for this. Uh, catch a lot of fish on that. And I will peg it, and sometimes I won't peg it. So it's not always the bait to peg. I like to peg it when I'm in and around the grass, but when I'm out in open water and I'm fishing ledges like at Kentucky Lake or throwing out deep in the brush piles and stuff, I like to leave it unpegged because that weight will fall down and that worm will kind of kind of slowly kind of hang behind and sometimes that will trigger those bites. So I'm not always putting a bobber stop on that. Now, line size anywhere, again, from say 12 pound up to 20. I would say my majority of the time I'm fishing it with 12 to 15 pound line. If I'm fishing uh, up real shallow like on Okeechobee, you know, casting it in the grass holes, I might go to 17 or 20, but for the most part, I'm in that 12 to 15 pound test, 17 occasionally, and rod wise, again, just kind of match it to the weight. If you're fishing with a smaller weight, you can get away with that 7.3. If you're fishing the big heavy stuff, go to your seven foot, six inch favorite rods, you know, like a flipping stick. That's what I'm gonna use, the new Pro Series that we've designed. That's a great, that seven, six heavy is a great rod for worm fishing, you know, that bigger, deeper stuff. So those are the three baits that I like. Talk about colors real quick. Simply put, match the colors to the time of the year. A lot of times in the summer, you know, the water's kind of clean and clear. There's a lot of bluegill up. Green pumpkins, watermelons, watermelon reds, those are the colors to choose from. If your water's a little dingy, a little muddy, sometimes you can go to your darker colors like your June bugs, stuff like this, okay? But basically those are my two colors. I'm either gonna throw June bug or I'm gonna throw some type of green pumpkin or watermelon. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple, guys. You go to the tackle shops and there's lots of colors to choose from. And uh, I'm going to keep it between those two shades, somewhere in the green pumpkin melon flavor and somewhere in that dark black and blue June bug flavor. And it just depends on, again, water clarity and water color and time of the year. In the summer, I'm going to fish my green pumpkins, my watermelons more. And in the wintertime or pre-spawn, I'm going to fish those darker colors. So that is that. Now, let's do this. Let's jump up. Let's take this worm right here. Hey, it's how to catch a bass on rubber worms. Let's go catch a bass, guys. All right, so let me just show you basic way of worm fishing. You know, it, it, here's a little rule that I always like to say. You can never fish a worm too slow, but you can definitely fish one too fast, okay? So a worm, let's just break it down real simple for you another way. 
this is a worm, not a swim bait. It's not a bluegill, it is a worm. It's imitating a crawdad, it's imitating a leech, it's imitating something that crawls on the bottom. So what I always like to tell people is move the bait, move this bait on the bottom with the rod. Don't move it by reeling. Only use the reel to reel up the slack that you've generated when you pull the bait. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna make a long cast out. I'm gonna watch that line. I'm gonna watch that line. I've got a, uh, again, I've got a quarter ounce weight on here. So I can kind of tell when it hit the bottom. I can see my line. It's, everything's not sinking anymore. And I'm just pulling that bait. I pulled it. I'm not moving the bait anymore. It's settling to the bottom. I'm reeling my slack up. Reeling my slack up. Bait has not moved. Bait has not moved. Reeling the slack up and I'm gonna pull it again. Look, I'm pulling it without even touching the reel. Pulling that worm, it's going along the bottom. I can feel it hitting the rocks, hitting the bottom, and I'm reeling my slack up. That right there is me dropping my tip back down to the bait and reeling the slack up that I created. So now the worm is going along the bottom and stopping, going along the bottom and stopping. And most of the time, those bass, they very seldom hit it when it's moving. They hit it when it's sitting still. So I pull it, let it sit, pull it, let it sit. And, um, and you'll feel that bite. You'll feel that doo doo doo, or you'll lift up on it and one might have it that you didn't feel. It'll feel kind of spongy. If that happens, I'll sit there and I'll just hold everything good, still and straight. And if I see my line moving off or I can feel the pressure pulling down on a little bit, then I know I've got a bite. And so that's the basic ways of just worm fishing right there. Again, what I like to say, low and slow. Don't fish it too fast. And again, watch me. I'm moving the bait right here. That's where I'm fishing it right there. I'm fishing the bait like that. And then it's sitting still. Reel up my slack and do it again. Now, picking the right size weight, obviously, is going to boil down to how deep you're fishing. Right here, we're in four foot of water. So a quarter ounce weight, it's some scattered grass, by the way, is perfect. If I was in 20 foot of water, I'd want to fish a little bit heavier weight. You know, like we talked about earlier when I was talking about the weights and the hooks, you're going to want to pick a heavier weight, like a half ounce. If we're in 20 foot of water, a three eighths to a half ounce might be the best weight because a quarter ounce in 20 foot of water is going to take too long for that bait to sink. You're going to not feel the bait dragging on the bottom. It's going to lift up too much when you pull it. Again, the trick is keeping that worm on the bottom. When the wind's blowing, you might even have to go up just a fraction more and wait when the wind blows because the wind will blow your line around. Now, one last little tip on the wind. When I'm worm fishing, I like to position my boat. Right now, I've got my back to the wind. I'm throwing downwind, right? I'm throwing downwind. I don't want to throw a lot of times completely crosswind because what happens is the wind will blow the belly of your line and actually pull your worm along the bottom when you weren't meaning it to get pulled or move. And that will uh, decrease your chances of catching a fish and you will lose your sensitivity. So I like to fish either into the wind or kind of with the wind, kind of position yourself. Uh, those couple ways and and those are the basic ways of worm fishing guys and catching fish on a ribbon tail worm like this If you ask me hey, you got one lure to pick one lure to go fishing with right there You can just about do everything you want to do another thing to remember when you're pulling this bait along like this is I like to pause I like to stop the bait with my rod tip up not down and the reason for that is I want to be able to feel that strike right if I have that line somewhat not tight, tight, but taut, right? And I have my rod tip up, lines up out of the water, and it's somewhat taut, and I got a little bow in the line right there, and one bites it, I can feel it. If I'm down, if I finish down here, then my line's in the water, and I cannot feel that strike. So then when I go to lift up again, something's on it, and the fish feels me, I feel him, and a lot of times you're gonna miss that fish. So again, when I pull it like this, I'll leave it in the up position and watch my line and try to feel that subtle bite. Again, finish up and leave it up and then reel down your slack, bait's not moving, and then move your bait again. That's the simple ABCs of worm fishing, guys. There's a bite. Oh, that's a good bite too. There he is. There he is right there. Right on that little grass patch right there. And I was just dragging that worm, just like I've been talking about. Just real easy. Just like that, guys. And that is how you catch a bass on a ribbon tail worm. That is it right there. We just did it. And if you just follow those simple tips, guys, you will catch fish like that. So guys, here's what I want you to do. I want you to 
be sure to smash that subscribe button, drop a comment below, let me know what you think of these tips, and share it to everyone. Share it to people that don't know that much about bass fishing because we want to grow fishing, right? We want to grow it. And thank you so much for all the support, guys. We will see you later. Bye!